How's it going everyone? I'm Sean and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a perfect join in a thin guitar top like this, what we would call a drop top, using a shooting board, this guy right here. So get yourself a nice hot cup of tea, coffee, beer, whatever you want, get comfortable and enjoy. So first of all, before we get into any of it, we're going to go over what is a shooting board. Essentially, as you can see from my one, it is two pieces of one larger piece of ply with another one that is taller on top. Creates this kind of shelf effect, I guess. I have a stop on the end here, and I have another piece underneath that acts as a bench hook, like that. This one I have personalized to have a cutout like this so that it fits onto a vise that is mounted onto my bench. I also have two holes in it that I can attach a 45 degree fence into it if I want to. The idea is that I will use a hand plane on this lower portion and I will keep the material that I'm jointing on the upper portion. And then I run it along and that should basically allow me to get a nice straight edge. And that is what creates our perfect join. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is what plane to use. So there are a couple of different planes that you can use depending on what you have and what you want. First of all, my personal favorite and the one I'm going to be using is this. This is a Stanley Sweetheart number 62. It's a low angle jack. Most of that jargon doesn't really matter. The most important thing is that this one, the reason I like it, is very comfortable to hold right there. It's not that big, so it's not, not very heavy. Next up, we have a number six plane. This is larger than the 62, and you'll notice it is not a, a low angle. This, again, works perfectly fine. It's just a little bit bulkier there, and the blade is kind of in the way of the side of my hand. I simply find the 62 more comfortable. And another choice that I would have is a number seven plane. Technically, this is going to be the best because it is a longer plane, it is gonna give you more area of reference and it's just gonna be technically the best. You can see here, this plane is actually longer than the piece that I'm going to join, which means it's gonna give me very good, very accurate straight edges. But again, 62, perfectly fine. So long as the plane is, let's say, at least half the length of the edge that you're jointing, it should be perfectly fine. First things first, I'm gonna put the shooting board into my vise and clamp it up. It's not quite so important to have it mounted in a vise. I prefer it because that doesn't go anywhere now. You are absolutely really going to need some kind of a stop underneath it, just so when you push against it, it doesn't go flying off the end of your bench. That just seems like common sense. Any piece of wood or MDF, anything stuck to the bottom, fine. I'll then take the two pieces to be joined, line them up to where I want to join them at, and I'm gonna draw a big triangle right across the center. This basically means that it, this is the only way this goes up and it lines it all up for me nicely. I'm also gonna write a big up on one. The reason I'm doing it only on one is essentially because my plane, no matter how hard I try, is never going to be set 100% true to 90 degrees. So what this means is if I were to plane this edge and then come back and plane this edge, they're going to create a V and you're going to get a big gap. Whereas if I plane this one and then I turn this one the other way around, plane that, they're both going to be planed kind of sideways like that come together, perfect join. Next up, for my actual stance and kind of poise, I always stand with one leg slightly further than the other. And I'm always, I have my left hand just holding the piece down. You can of course always clamp it if you prefer. I just prefer not to, as simple as. And then the motion I'm doing is like this. 
the way I'm applying my pressure, and this is the really, really key part. When I'm starting off, you have to imagine the toe of the plane is your reference area. So I am putting all of my pressure to the front of the plane as it engages. As I'm going through it, I am essentially rolling my hand back. And as I get to the last third of the pass, I will roll my hand all the way back and I'm essentially pushing with my wrist. So again, starting off all my pressure on the front of the plane, transition to the middle, and finally to the back. So once again, start at the front, transition to the middle, and now back to the back. And you can even see I'm pulling forward with my thumb to really get that toe out. Now this piece has a belly, and I can tell that because as I go, I end up with a gap at the front edge of it, kind of consistently along. So that tells me that this central area is bulging out in that kind of a, kind of that motion. So to get rid of that, I'm gonna start by taking a pass about that long, and then I'm gonna lengthen out to that long. And that is hopefully going to scoop it in and give me, give me a concavity instead of a bulge. So one pass, I'm gonna do two. That second pass didn't do very much. And now to there and to there. So I should now have something similar to a concavity. So I'm gonna go one more time. And it feels an awful lot better, a little bit rocky and out there. That was quite a rough pass. What I'm looking for as well, you can see from these guys, they're all quite small, a bit piddly. What I'm looking for is one consistent, and this wasn't it, but my gap has closed up. So I'm definitely on the right path. My shavings are getting bigger. One more pass might do it. Remember, all on the front. Transition to the middle, and now start pulling it back. We're getting there. So I'm still having some weird dive off down here, so I'm actually going to target a hollow just there. So I've centered it around here because I essentially I'm having a bulge there and now I can come back and hopefully that's good it's definitely getting better and I'm going to continue this until I'm able to get nice shavings that I can feel go the full length and that one Pretty much it. But I still have it not taking from the very first 20, 30 millimeters down here, so I'm gonna keep going, putting extra pressure right up on the toe. And I'm bringing it back, I have it on the fat of my hand, and back, practically pushing with my forearm. Now, I shall repeat the same on the other one. And if you remember, we have that, we have up written on this one. Therefore, this one shall go down. After shooting both sides, I am now left with a join that I know because I can kind of, with minimal finger pressure, I can essentially close this gap completely and get an invisible join, which I hope I'll be able to capture and picture for you guys. 
and it didn't take me that long. It took me one decently nice sharp plane and about seven minutes to get both sides of these completely perfectly joined. Now I'm not going to glue these guys up right now at the moment but if I was I would be getting first of all a flat board. This is just a piece of plywood that I know is at least fairly flat. Be taking my two pieces, you know, lining them up exactly where I wanted so that I got a nice book match. A little bit of glue on one side. You don't need an awful lot of glue for this kind of a setup. And then to clamp these together, we're just going to use some masking tape. And she get a piece roughly the size of the width of the board. What I'm doing is I'm pre-tensioning this. I'm pulling it apart and then using my other fingers, these three fingers here, to push the edges of the top together and placing them down. Between that pre-tensioning and then the pushing together, this is going to go together nicely and you're going to get that invisible join. So once again, about the width of the top, pulling the tape apart, pushing the top in, and down it goes. Now, I would continue this, and I would always want to leave about half the width of the tape between each. So I'd have another one there, another one there, so on and so forth, and essentially mummify the whole thing. Now, one thing we'll notice, as you go along, this is going to want to start to spring up like this. Simply get some blocks and weight it down. Easy peasy. And if you've gone through all of those steps, done them like that, and held yourself to a good high standard, of course, you should have one perfectly jointed glued guitar top. Suitability on this guy is one that I get asked quite a bit, and for something like this, which is about five millimeters thick at the moment, so quite thin, this is ideal. Anything I would say up to about 15 millimeters, maybe even 20 mil, perfectly fine. Work away on it. Should be fine, no problem at all. You may have to sharpen your plane a little bit more for thicker stock, but for the thinner stuff, any the, anything that goes into a drop top, then yes, absolutely all day long. Anything. My rule of thumb is anything that, when put into a vise, doesn't give you enough surface area to run a plane over. That is when the shooting board is going to come out. And that is pretty much it. That is every step you guys need to know to get a perfect join on a guitar top. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned it. And try it out for yourselves. Let me know what you think. Let me know how it went for you guys. And yeah, this is very easy to do, very easy to create. Making a shooting board, very, very easy. Let me know in the comments section. I can do a video on how to make one. They're quite simple, quite easy, but I'll make one for you guys if you'd like. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, Her hope you learned a little bit. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, leave a like on the video. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Check out some of my other videos. And I'll see you all again real soon.